Whipper Will Arts presents the Now and Jim Show, sponsored by Banjo Boy Coffee. Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Nell. I'm Jim. <laughs> and we're so glad to have you back with us today. We're, um, we've been streaming on YouTube, and, and this is our first time now to try our show streaming on Facebook. So hello, everybody in Facebook world. Um, That's what it's called? Facebook world. No, streaming. I thought it was screaming. I thought everybody was screaming on Facebook. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. Yeah, they probably are. They probably are. Huh. <laughs> Live scream. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we have a really fun show for you all today. And we're so excited because our friend Annie Staninets, who is an amazing musician, fiddler, singer, um, and is up in Portland, Oregon, is able to join us because of this wonderful technology. So Jim's going to talk with her in a little bit, and she's going to play some music. And we have a contortionist who I can't wait to see what she's going to do. Her name is Dahlia, and I'm not sure where she's from, but I know Rochelle's going to tell us a little bit more about her later. Rochelle's our producer. You'll meet her in a, in a few minutes. Um, so we um, encourage you to write notes in the chat and comments in Facebook. And if you have any questions for us, there'll be a live chat exchange later in the show. Um, if you have any milestones you want us to mention and celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, special occasions, um, happy to do that as well. And we do have a, um, a donate button. It's, or excuse me, a donate um, way to donate, and that's on Venmo at Whip Arts, W H I P A R T S. As I say every show, that's not an S and M club. It's an actual a nickname for our, our company, which is Whipper Will Arts. So um, we wanted to kick off with a little music, and this is a clip from a live show that we did at the Big Room in Chico, California, and it was filmed for PBS, and we have a clip of a song called Pardon Me, which is a Jim and Jesse yes. song, right? Him and Hesse. <laughs> here it is. We do another tune here. This is one that was done by a great brother duet called Jim and Jesse McReynolds. And uh, what I think is very cool about this song is that it features in country music, the country music rumba boogie. I've been 
in me But I think you're the one, love But I've been waiting on more sun and all Pardon me, could we walk in the moonlight Just to sit there and find right or wrong Just to sit there and find right or wrong This is our little back patio, and I thought Jim was meeting me out here. I got him. Okay. I got him. Here you go. I got him right there. You got three, huh? Wow. Yeah, I was tell the folks. Tell them are, what you're going to do. This is a bag of beans right here. And bag so of beans. With you're with full bag of beans. Of beans. You can make these little balls right here. Oh. And what I did is um, I made these. I've just cut some plastic. You can do this at home. This is a great thing for to do with the kids. Uh, when you're in quarantine, you have this little, it's like a little art project, but it's a lot of fun because you're going to learn how to do something today that's really special. So what we have is little bits of plastic, and I put some of this, what they call, it's not really duct tape, they, they call it gaffer's tape. And you know, the world of rock and roll would cease if there was no gaffer's tape. So, got gaffer's tape, little plastic, Put the beans, one half a cup of beans per bag to make a ball. And so what we're going to do today, we're going to learn to juggle. See, and I never knew you could juggle. Well, I've I known you for over 10 years. I used to be, I used to be in the circus. I was a ju master juggler. A lot of people Step think back a little bit. A lot of people think that it's clowns. That's, that, that's like true. That fits clowns, the bill. But, but no, master jugglers are actually people that, you know, you see them do. Uh -huh. bowling pins and That's stuff like you. that. It's danger. Got danger. it. Okay. But this is for fun and I haven't done it for years, but I thought this would be a great way to teach people how to juggle. So here yeah, we go. Yeah, good way this to kill time to during quarantine. First, here's your lesson. You need okay. three balls. Okay, there okay. we go. One, two, three. Three Got balls it. and you can make them yourself. It's uh -huh. a fun, fun little project to do with the kids. And then you take, first thing you have to do is you have to learn how to drop the ball. Oh. Ready? Yeah. So you go up. Try that again. That's the first first thing you have to do is because that looks easy. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Then the next thing after you do that is toss and catch. Toss, catch, toss, catch. Okay. Just throw it up, down, catch it like that. And then the other thing, the next thing you're gonna do is toss it from one hand to the other, up and over, like that, just like that. Up, over, up, over. And then you're gonna add one to the equation here. Take your other ball, and you go up, over, whoop. Like I said, I haven't done this in a long time. Up, <laughs> over. up over, just okay. like that. Practice that. And of course, once in a while, you're gonna have to do this. Oh, and drop the ball. Okay. So, up, over, up, over like that then you add one more oh man so then you just simply, hard. you're gonna just do it in that rotating pattern like this oh my you god go, like and then you're juggling just like that next thing oh you put a uh, uh. <laughs> that's today's q-tip woohoo good one there jimmy Juggle. okay i'll meet you inside okay. good one All right, so this next segment is so much fun because we get to have Jim call up his friends yeah. and ask them questions so that we can get to know them a little bit better. And yeah. it gives Jim a chance just to make bad jokes and it, stuff like that. It's It's been so long since I've talked to Annie, but we got our, in fact, it, oh. these phones were still in existence, I think, the last time I talked. Yeah. Here, go ahead and dial. Okay, I'll so, take that. Okay, you take that. I'll do this. Can you see if it's ringing? Let's see. Oh, there it goes. It's starting to ring. Let's see here. Hopefully she'll pick up. Two She's ringy a busy dingies. person, you know. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi, Annie. Gosh, it's so great. <laughs> so great to see you. I mean, talk to you on the telephone. It's hi, really Mel and Jim. <laughs> hi, how are you doing? 
Go it's been ahead. so long. It's been so long. You've been doing so many things, and uh, uh, how is the? How are things up there in Portland? Things are okay. All staying at home, and probably kind of similar to the rest of the world, but everything's okay here for the moment. <laughs> Good. Oh, that's good. That's good. And so you've been staying at home and you've been working on uh, teaching, probably teaching. I bet you're doing a lot of teaching these days. I have. I've been doing a bunch of online lessons, so that's been good. Wow. When We're... is the first time you met her? Oh, wait a sec. Oh, when is, when is the first time you met Jim? Do you remember? I was going to ask that question myself. <laughs> yeah, In I a know. minute. I... I don't know. I grew up <laughs> listening to you play could, music, and I, I'm not sure if I remember the very first time I met you. Well, you were you, actually the first time I probably met you, you were, you were very young. I don't remember if it was a, um, well, I know the first time that we, wor we worked together was you came to play at my recording studio on a record for Chad Manning. And uh, he said, wow, Jim, you aren't going to believe this kid. She's amazing. <laughs> and I think you might might have been like 11 or 12. And uh, I don't know when you were taking lessons from, but in any case, you came in. And, and do you remember that? I do remember that. It was so long ago. But yes, I was taking lessons from Chad. And I remember now he asked me to play on his album and so I was really really excited about that and I do remember coming to your studio to record yeah and, and you said you know you came in you took your fiddle out and you you uh I queued it up got your headphones all set and put the microphone up there and and then I said well when you hear the music just play and you played and you played through it one time and it was perfect <laughs> you played twin fiddle some very fast twin fiddle tune. It was amazing. And uh, you, you were all excited and you said, this is my very first recording session. <laughs> you have a great memory, Jim. I'm yeah. impressed. <laughs> yeah. I do remember well, I was also... excited to be on that album because Chad's been my hero forever. Yeah, he's a great musician. And so are you. And we worked together too. We worked in, we toured together and uh, with John Reichman and the Jaybirds. We have. That was so fun in Canada. Yeah, I just said that. Oh, sorry, it must be today. <laughs> I don't think you said Canada, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah, we played in. I think we played in uh, Calgary, Calgary Folk Club, I believe. That's right. We did. Yes, Anyway, um, uh, so uh, I also know that you played with Rod Stewart. Have you heard of him? He's like a big rock and roll guy. Yeah, my mom used to have a crush on Rod Stewart. I hate to say that because it makes you realize kind of how old he is, but <laughs> probably not that much older than me. <laughs> oh, I think a lot of ladies still have a crush on him. As my I mom had the biggest crush on Rod Stewart. For yeah. The better part of 2016. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, two, 2016. That was 15. The, 2015 mm -hmm. was 16, when you worked with him. Right. Yeah. Wow. Did you ever play in Las Vegas with him? <laughs> I did. That was my first live gig with him was at the Caesars Palace venue in Las Vegas. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Were you nervous? The yes, I was pretty stressed out leading up to the first show just because there were so many new things to learn and the music was just like a really small part of the new things I needed to learn. Um, so that was definitely kind of stressful, but he was so sweet to me and the rest of the band and the crew. And it was funny, once I stepped out on stage all of the anxiety just evaporated because that felt like home to me i was like oh 
this is just a show. I know what to do. So that was kind of funny that uh, it all felt comfortable once we were playing the show and it was super fun. It was like a big old party on stage every night. And I think that's kind of the vibe that he really wanted to have for the band and the audience to keep it really fun and mix it up a little bit every night too. Yeah, That's really amazing. And so is he as cool as you are? Uh, <laughs> I think he's a whole lot cooler than I am. But, Not in um, our opinion. No, no way. No way. No, no. Wait, wait a minute. No way. <laughs> we don't um, agree. <laughs> yeah. He's a, a really sweet guy, though, so it made a really big difference there to work for him. And he really goes the extra mile to make everybody feel comfortable and at home. And he took the time to learn my partner John's name and even invited him backstage for drinks um, after the first show at Caesars Palace because he wanted to meet him and make him feel welcome. So oh, when he came nice. backstage, he Broad got up himself from the chair and gave John a hug and introduced Gosh. himself and went and got him two beers <laughs> himself. Wow. So that was really, really sweet. That's fantastic. That's so sweet. That's really nice. That's really great. Well, we're, we're so excited you're on the show and we're going to get over right into uh, you and John playing a tune for us. Okay, we're settled in here. And I'm going to get my partner, John Kale, to help me out on this first song. It's an old Charlie Poole song called The Milwaukee Blues. <clears throat> One, two. One, two, three. <laughs> Farming said, what could it be? 
<laughs> That's always really fun to play. This next tune is a Norman Blake tune called Old Grimes. And I've been having a lot of fun playing it for a few years, and I guess it's a little bit Irish fiddling influenced. I thought it would be kind of fun on this tune. So here it goes. Thank you so much, Annie. That was great. She's awesome. She's amazing. <clears throat> and um, we're so happy you joined us today. Thank you so, so much. We hope we'll get to see you soon and stay well. Um, so for this lifestyle segment um, today, we, um, we wanted to highlight podcasts that we really love. And I actually had three in mind, but I decided that I was just going to focus on one today. And that is um, the podcast called Reveal. And Reveal is a project of the Center for Investigative Reporting. Um, and it's, it's outstanding. Uh, you can find it on any, li any listing of podcasts or Google it, you'll find it. Um, but I think it was really um, incredibly moving and incredibly important um, what they put out this past week and we wanted to actually recommend that you listen to that particular to this um, particular episode it's called the uprising and um, it is focused on um, the protests around police violence against black people and um, so Jim I I have a, a beloved niece who is a beautiful young black woman. And um, Jim has uh, brown people in his family from various places. 
And so these are uh, these issues affect our families as well as our communities. And so we are just very much dedicated to trying to do everything we can to bring attention to the issues um, around Black Lives Matter. And um, so check out this web this up uh, this um, podcast. Let me tell you what the um, segments are about. The first segment is so beautiful. What they did is they took a sort of a soundscape from lots of protests all over the country. And I, it was hard to listen to it and not really choke up. I did choke up um, because you're just hearing all of these beautiful voices in despair, in rage, um, in togetherness. Um, it was a really beautiful snapshot, I think, of what's happening all over the country. Um, then the first interview he has is with uh, Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison. And Keith Ellison is um, uh, prosecuting the case against um, the officers involved in the death of George Floyd. Um, he is a black man. He has great and detailed knowledge about the police union there, which has been really an obstacle to any sort of reforming of um, police violence in Minnesota. And very, very interesting person. We're going to see a lot of him, I think, in the coming days uh, as he figures out what's going to, how, how they're going to prosecute these officers. Um, next, he talks to a college sophomore. Um, who I think is from UC Berkeley, and his name is Riley Lockett. And he's a young person um, talking about his experience, why he's on the streets, why he's getting involved every day. Mm -hmm. um, and he um, he's involved with a youth media program called YR Media, which he, it was just incredible. It's wonderful to hear from such a young person, a 19-year-old. That was followed by hearing from um, a 77-year-old woman um, also African-American from Detroit, remembering um, the big protests in Detroit uh, in 1967. What led to them, what they were like. She was a kid and um, she now has uh, grandchildren the age that she was when she experienced those that upheaval in the city of Detroit and in her community. And it's an amazing thing to hear that long perspective and to hear how it affected her as a child and her concerns, of course, about her own children and her grandchildren, as, as well as the greater community. She was really, she's a great storyteller. Um, it was really good to learn more about what was happening. Was that 60, oh, 50 years ago, over 50 years ago. And then lastly, um, Al Letson, the host, um, interviews a, a professor at the Harvard Kennedy School who's the author of The Condemnation of Blackness. His name is Khalil Gibran Muhammad, and um, also a fascinating person. The thing that I thought was so amazing was to learn, remember, be reminded of the origin of police forces in this country. They haven't always been here. They haven't always existed. Of course, the slave patrols were the first um, sort of um, organized police. Um, and their job was, of course, to round up uh, people who were enslaved and return them as property to the um, to the white to the white people. So um, ignominious beginnings there. And then um, later on, he described that what happened with the police when they um, uh, got uniforms and badges and they were sort of the, an official government force. Um, is that they were originally, that originally arose in big cities um, where essentially very narrow political interests were controlling the police. So it wasn't out for the whole public good, it was really to serve a particular um, political group's interests. So, um, you know, we don't, we know there are a lot of police officers who are honorable, have integrity, work hard and we love and value them. But I think what I really, what really got driven home um, from this series, um, this episode of Reveal, is that the system was broken from the very beginning. 
And um, I got just a tremendous uh, sort of spark of hope um, from the last interview with this, um, this Harvard professor um, who said, we know what to do. It's not like we don't know what to do. We don't need a highly militarized police force in this country. Community-based, health-based responses to crime and violence have proven to be effective. So um, what a better way to, to keep from escalating um, situations to the point where people die or killed. So we just thought it was in a beautiful, beautiful um, series of stories, highly important for all of us to listen to, especially those of us who are white and who are um, trying to figure out what we can do and how we can help and also to be um, you know, more educated and aware of how we benefit from our our privilege and all the safe spaces in the world that we have that are not open to people of different skin colors. So with love to um, all of our family members and our friends and community, um, we just offer this as um, the best podcast around. Hope you enjoy it. Hi, everybody. It's me, Rochelle. I'm very excited to be here today. I have one of my favorite performers um, as a guest today. She is very bendy, a contortionist from Chicago. Um, and I'm so excited to share her artistry with all of you. Um, so please enjoy our variety guest performer of the week, Dahlia. Hi, Nell and Jen. Dahlia here from Chicago. I'm going to bring you a little bit of contortion. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm coming at you from way back here, because that's where the speakers are.
my God. <laughs> oh, Dahlia, you are amazing. That's unbelievable. You're so beautiful. And the fact that you can do all that and then look as if you're completely relaxed and happy. <laughs> that was amazing. Wow. Michelle, where did you where did you find how did you get a hold of uh, Dahlia? I have been a fan of her work for many years. So um, I've been to Chicago a few times because before I moved to California, I was thinking of moving to Chicago. And when I w would visit there, I would just check out different theater and pr just different shows. And um, mm. I got the privilege to see Dahlia. So wow. I just wanted to have her here. It's spectacular. It is really unbelievable. I mean, I've seen Nell do that a few times in the morning. She gets up, does sort of stretching like that, but you know, not quite like that. Maybe it's the outfit. <laughs> it must be the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Um, you want to introduce Rochelle? Um, this is, by the way, yes. Sorry that our our signal dropped there at the beginning. But maybe even didn't even notice because. Um, our co-producer here, Rochelle First, she does such a great job every week on our, our uh, live stream, or our live scream, as we call it. Um, she, after watching Dahlia, I sort of want to scream. I'm like, how does she do that? <laughs> In any case, um, Rochelle First, she's the co-producer, and she's the one who saves us each week when our stream <laughs> goes away. And we're so happy for her because... Her daughter just graduated from high school. Congratulations. And, uh, Proud yeah. mom. Malia. Thank you. And uh, do you want to tell us about what it's like having a, uh, your daughter graduate from high school? You don't look like you're old enough to have a daughter to graduate from high school. I don't feel old enough to have a daughter going to college either, but apparently... I am, and I do. Um, so it's pretty exciting. She's going to Santa Clara University, and wow. yeah, I have. I'm officially a middle-aged woman. <laughs> you know what? As a person who's been through middle age, I'm not exactly through it yet, but I just can tell you, I guarantee it's an amazing new chapter of your life. It's going to be so wonderful. <laughs> I'm excited for it. Good. So I am watching the chat, and um, we have some guests here. We have band member Rob Reich. Oh. Hey. Hi, Rob. And we have Patricia, and Patricia wants to know how the guys in the band are... are I don't mean guys by gender. I think it's just how everyone in the band is doing. Um, so have you <laughs> yeah. been have you been communicating or tell us how tell us what's been happening with the band during quarantine? Hmm. Well, we we have stayed in touch. Um, we've done I think have we done one Zoom? I guess we've only done one Zoom. And um, that was really a special treat. And we all just said how much we miss each other and how strange this is. And then we just got back to the normal joking around and cutting jokes and laughing and catching up on telling stories and telling stories, you know, listening to stories. So um, we, then we texted back and forth a little bit. You know, we've seen Rob on this show. And we'll have Jim Kerwin and Alex Aspinall on this show, too, as guests in the future, not too long from now. Um, we text back and forth, like, can you believe it? We're supposed to be in Ireland today. <laughs> you know, like, oh, we're yeah. supposed to be getting on a plane for London. Oops, here we are at home. Um, yeah. So we have been in touch, but we really miss them. There's nothing like being in the same room with your close friends, people you yeah. really love and care about, and making music together. Do you miss him, John? John. <laughs> it says Why do I on, the, call you John? on the screen right there, Jim. <laughs> says, see right there, it says Mel and Jim. You just need to read the screen. Why do I call you John? This is I Jim. That's I'm trying to figure out. It's running through my head. Why is she calling me John? What's going on here? That's, that's actually... Uh, I have no idea. That's the other... That's Annie's segment. <laughs> oh, okay. John. <laughs> 
her partner is John. Oh, okay, thank you. That's your that's your out. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I do miss I do miss um, I miss all the fellas in the band, um, and they're I miss playing music with them and playing music with Nell. Although we get to play a little bit around the house, there's nothing like uh, playing music with the band, and um, it's been too long. Uh, in fact, I would say since I was uh, started playing music in the music mm -hmm. business, I've played music with other people probably the longest period of time maybe was two weeks of not playing music with other people. Oh, my gosh. So it's a strange thing to not play music with other people. And uh, it's a big part of our life. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that coming back at least getting back into rehearsing and if uh, we can maybe we'll be able to do some recording projects or something like that but touring is going to be difficult we don't know yet what's going to happen with touring and so but it would be great on the nell and jim show we're going to try to have the band members uh be, be featured artists on our show this show mm -hmm. and so um Besides that, at some point, it would be great if we're all in the same room and we're able to do live streaming with the band. That would be great. That the would be really year. nice. Um, I have a question just that I'm curious about, and that is, out of all the music you've made together, do you, each of you have a favorite song that you've oh. created? as a duo? Oh, that's a good question. But that's like asking a parent with lots of children, which one is your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we love all of our children <laughs> equally. But my yeah. favorite is. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite? Um, I don't have necessarily a favorite, but I do have a song that has a special meaning to me. And that's a uh, the one that's called Life in the Garden. Yeah. And uh, it's one of the very first, if not the first song that we wrote together. And um, at our house here, there's a, a railing that um, I had made for the house. Up, you can almost see it out the window there behind us, almost. But the second story up, there's a railing that goes around and it's made out of um, stainless steel. And I had it laser cut out of stainless steel and I wrote the music out and uh, all the lyrics out. And uh, I uh, had an idea for getting graphics together for that. And that was since that song had so much meaning to me, I made a railing of a song out there in the around our, our second story deck. That's right. And when he when he showed it to me, he said, that's your ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's really, I think it's a, the song really has a deep meaning to me in so far as the, mm -hmm. the lyrical content and the fact that we wrote it together and it's Aww. our first and, you know, our first song together that that's our creation. Yeah, I love that one too. And um, I think I'm just going to say off the cuff um, at this moment, um, I am really, um, I'm really loving by Stars and Sunrise. And that's the first song on our new album that came out, Western Sun. And um, it's really special. We created that with also another friend, Chris Wadsworth. And um, Jim, Jim just sings it so beautifully. And his guitar um, work in the middle of it is just, it's just stunning. So it was fun to sing that with him. I play a little bit um, because he encouraged me to do that. But but I sort of feel like Jim's the star of that show, and I really love that. Nice question. Um, and then my next and final question is, how has the pandemic changed your artistry in ways that you would have not thought about had mm -hmm. we not been in the middle of a global pandemic? Mm-hmm. You want me to start? Do you have a thought? Um, you go ahead. Um, so I actually have two thoughts about that. Um, 
I guess I would have imagined that we would have done a lot of writing and a lot of rehearsing, but that's not really true. Um, I think that it was sort of like we were going 60 miles an hour and somebody pulled the emergency brake. I mean, we were literally getting ready to go on tour for four, for a few months. And so it really threw us for a loop. Um, but there's some really positive things that have come out of it for us, I think, as musical partners and as creative people. And one of them has been um, we've taken the songs from our new album and we've approached other artists and asked them to create something visual that represents that song. So um, we love that kind of idea of, um, you know, starting maybe with the idea might have come from a book for a song. Um, we created a poem, put it to music, performed it, put it on an album, and now we're asking somebody to do something that may be stop motion or videography or photography based um, yeah. to bring that story to life. Right. So we kind of intrigued by that kind of thing. So we're doing that for several of our videos and those will be coming out in the next few months. Um, the other thing that I think is and not directly related to the pandemic, but it's rather um, all the protests that are happening all around the country for Black Lives Matter. And that is that um, it's heightened our awareness of the um, richness of collaborating and reaching out to um, artists of color, musicians of color, and um, to think about how we can feature them on our shows, how we can work with them in some of our projects, um, whether it be the Whipperwill, Whipperwill Arts Awards or the Banjo Boy Coffee Series, which you're heading up. Um, I don't know if you want to say something about that, but that would, that's kind of what comes to me. I feel like things have blossomed in, in those two ways based on what's happening in the rest of the world, and it's it's been really good for us. That's great. Um, Jim, do you want to talk a little bit about the Banjo Boy coffee series since you are Banjo Boy? <laughs> <laughs> Banjo Boy Coffee, that is. Um, <laughs> well, <clears throat> we're planning on the series. And, you know, uh, Rochelle, of course, you're working on most of the logistical aspects of this. But the, I and the idea behind it is to have sponsorship for various artists to um, have a segment of st streaming content that's sponsored by Banjo Boy Coffee. And, and can you tell us about what your ideas are about the how long the segments are and what the people are gonna, gonna be doing? Oh, can't hear you. Oops. Sorry about that. Um, I have been consuming a lot of Instagram Live concerts, which inspired the idea. Um, so basically, it's going to be 30 to 45 minute live sets, um, very intimate because everyone is in their homes and um, it's just sharing music. And since we are in the midst of this Black Lives Matter movement, um, we want to show or share the range of musicians in this genre or, or these genres. Um, so it's really exciting. It's given me a, the opportunity to do a lot of research and dig um, and find different artists. So I'm pretty excited and grateful to have, you know, such a fun project to share with people. We are too. And we're also, this is Pride Month. So we're going to have a very special um, show. This Nell and Jim show is going to be a very special show on June, which date is that? June 24th, is that right? I think so. I think so. I'm pulling up my calendar. Two weeks from today, I my... think. We're gonna have a special show in, and it's just celebrating pride. And we can't ha have the big parades and celebrations that we're used to, but we can all be together and celebrate from our homes live streaming. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me. And um, it's been a great show. So goodbye, Thank everyone you, who's Rochelle. watching. Thanks, Rochelle. Thanks so much. Um, we're going to go out with some music and just want to say um, thank you again for joining us from me and from Jim. And thank you for joining us in our home. We're sitting in our dining room. That's our kitchen behind us. 
Um, we're just so pleased to have welcomed Annie Staninets and um, hope that we'll get to see you before too long, Annie. And loved Dahlia. She was amazing. And I yes. believe Rochelle is probably putting into the chat links where you can find um, these two wonderful artists and explore their their artistry and learn a little bit more about them. Don't forget that there is a Venmo at WIP Arts, W-H-I-P-A-R-T-S, where you can make donations. And um, so we have a, um, I think we're playing, this next video is of the last time that the band performed live together. And that was in February. And we took a medley that we put together with our bandmates um, that is a medley of the, of the, um, the Handsome Cabin Boy and Handsome Molly. So we call it the handsome medley. <laughs> She dressed herself in sailor's clothes, or so it does appear. And she hired with a captain to serve him for a year. The captain's wife, she being on board, she seemed in great joy to see the captain had engaged such a handsome cabin boy. But now and then she'd slip him a kiss, and she'd have liked to talk. Captain found out the secret of the handsome cabin boy. Her cheeks, they were like roses, and her hair rolled in a curl. The sailors often smiled and said he looked just like the girl. And eating of the captain's biscuit, her color did destroy. And the wasted swell of pretty Nell, the handsome cabin boy. ship to plow. One night among the sailors was a fearful flurry and row. They tumbled from their hammocks for their sleep it did destroy. And they moaned about the groaning of the handsome cabin boy. Oh doctor, dear old oh, doctor, the cabin boy did cry. My time has come, I am undone. The doctor come a running and a smiling at the fun to think a sailor lad should have a daughter or a son. Now the sailors, when they saw the joke, they all did stand and stare. The child belonged to none of them, they solemnly did swear. The captain's wife, she says to him, my dear, I wish you joy. Which is either you or I's betrayed the handsome cabin boy. Take your totterum and drink success to trade. And likewise to the cabin boy who was neither man nor maid. Here's hoping the wars don't rise again, our sailors to destroy. And here's hoping for a jolly lad more like the handsome cabin boy. I wish I 
wish I was in London or some other seaport town. I'd set my foot on a steamboat and sail the ocean round. While sailing around the ocean, sailing around the sea, I'd think of handsome Molly wherever she might be. You broke your promise, go with whom you please. My poor heart is breaking while you were at your ease. While sailing around the ocean, sailing around the sea, I think of handsome Molly, wherever she might be. I saw you at church last Sunday, you passed me on by. I could tell your mind was changing by the roping of your eye. I go down by the river while everyone's asleep. I think of handsome Molly and I begin to weep. While sailing around the ocean, sailing around the sea, I think of handsome Molly wherever she might be. All right. Thank you so much for joining us for this show today. And um, just want to um, ask you to check out our new album. It's called Western Sun. It's been out on the folk radio stations. Or the album is number three on the folk um, chart, which is exciting for us. We're in very good company. Gretchen Peters and Eliza Gilkison both have albums out. So they're in one and two. Our album is n number three. And um, you can find that on our website. We'll be releasing it digitally probably in a week or so, maybe as early as Friday. We're just having issues with CD Baby, which everybody has been as well. So check out the album. Stay in touch. Okay, Jim, you're just in time to say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Nell and Jim Show. You can tip the artists on Venmo at Whiplarts. We'll be back next week with a wonderful lineup of musical guests, variety guests, and a whole lot of fun. See you next week.